Potato. Boil it, mash it, stick it in the stew. Boil it, mash it, stick it in the stew. Boil it, mash it, stick it in the stew. Boil it, mash it, stick it in the stew. Hello everybody, I'm Smanman. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are embarking on a brand new vintage recipe adventure and we are doing something for St. Patrick's Day. I put out a poll on all of my social medias asking you guys what you wanted me to do, whether it be cook or bake a vintage Irish recipe or do something similar to what I did for Valentine's Day and so a dress. We had so many votes come in but definitely the cooking slash baking won by quite the hefty margin. So here we are today with today's brand new vintage recipe. Today's recipe comes from 1930 and it is the Irish potato cake. This recipe came out of the book, A Bag Full of Recipes, which was in conjunction with Imperial Sugar. Imperial Sugar came out with this book and every single recipe has, of course, their sugar in it. And that is where I found this recipe. In the description box below, I have also linked the modern version that Imperial Sugar has gone back and refined. We are going to be baking the original vintage version, but I am tempted by the modern version. So we'll see how this turns out. Let's get started. Aprons on. For this recipe, you will need the following ingredients. One cup of butter or margarine, one and a half cups of brown sugar, I don't have imperial brand so I'm just using whatever I had in my cupboard, three eggs, two squares of bitter chocolate melted, one cup of mashed potatoes, I made this freshly this morning, one cup of milk, two cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of allspice, one teaspoon of vanilla and one cup of nuts. We will be using macadamia nuts as they were taken off my parents' tree and freshly cracked open. Of course, we start by preheating the oven to 180 degrees Celsius or about 350 Fahrenheit. All right, let's get started. We begin by creaming the butter and sugar. I then add in my eggs and mashed potato. I make sure to mix between each ingredient. The recipe then says to alternate the dry ingredients with milk. So I start with my two cups of flour and then go in with half a cup of milk. I add in my baking powder, more milk, and then my spices. Once that is all mixed together, I add in the melted chocolate, vanilla, and nuts. Now this is a pretty straightforward recipe and it smells delicious. The only thing going through my head is the potatoes and molasses song because the brown sugar and the potatoes just makes me feel like I'm in over the garden wall. So that's... <laughs> That's just making my day. I have borrowed slash stolen my mum's baking loaf tin. So this is the one we'll be using today. And I have been instructed to grease it and flour it. So that is what I'm doing now. I then pour my cake mixture into the pan and it goes into the oven for about 15 minutes. Moments later. I mean, it works for Great British Bake Off. More moments later. Yeah, that's not done. Okay, so I've just checked at the 15 minute mark as per the recipe, and it is definitely still cake batter in the middle. So I'm going to leave it for another 20 minutes. According to the modern version, they bake theirs for 70 to 80 minutes, which is quite a hefty amount of time. So I'm going to give it another 20 minutes and we'll see how we go from there. Moments later. Oh, potatoes and molasses. One nap later. Mm -hmm. 
later. I think it's done. There it is. That's just it's coming out clean, which is good. Ooh. I think we just let her cool now. I realized that in the modern version that Imperial Sugar has released, they added a glaze. Because we have done the vintage cake, I thought we would do the modern glaze and combine it together because I love me a good glazed cake. Glaze. For the glaze, you need two tablespoons of salted butter, which is melted, one cup plus two tablespoons of powdered sugar, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, two tablespoons of hot water, and some chopped pecans. To make the glaze, you simply whisk the melted butter, powdered sugar, vanilla, and hot water. You can add more sugar or water to adjust the consistency as you need. Once you are happy with it, you simply pour it over the cooled cake and scatter the chopped pecans on top. Ah, she's all glazed and beautiful. Isn't she? Questionably looking, but the smell is amazing. I am a sucker for anything that's got spices in it. Yay! Now let's chippy chop her up before I drop it and we get a bigger fail. All right, let's give it a taste. We've got some of the icing in there too. It's really good. <laughs> that cake is absolutely delicious. I was worried it would be really dense because most loaf cakes can be. It is definitely not dry. I really was expecting to taste the potatoes, but obviously you can't. It's a little bit like walnut bread or a Banana bread without the banana. I'm very good at describing flavors, apparently. But all up, I am pretty happy with that. And that is everything I have time for you guys today. I have really enjoyed making this cake slash loaf for you guys to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. If you give this recipe a go, please let me know. You can find all my social medias down below. I would love it if you would tag me so I can see your amazing creations. If you would also like a proper copy of the recipe, you can find that as well in the description box below. I would love it if you could like, comment and subscribe to my channel on YouTube or any of my social medias. I am also now on the tickety talk. I'm not that great at it. I have no idea what I'm doing or how to I can't even reply to people because I don't know how. And that is everything I have time for you guys today. I have really enjoyed this recipe. I feel like I'm sort of getting back into the swing of vintage recipes and I hope to make them a little bit more regular. If you give this recipe a go, please let me know by tagging me on any of my social medias. They're all linked down below. And if you would like a proper copy of this recipe, you can find it in my blog, which is also in the description box below. I would really appreciate it if you would like, comment and subscribe to my channel. We all have a lot of vintage glamour and mainly tomfoolery here, so I'd love to have you along on that journey. I will be coming back on Friday with another brand new video, but until then, I hope you guys all be kind, be true and be you. Bye! Boil and mash and stick him in the stew. Boil and mash and stick him in the stew. Boil and mash and stick him in the stew.